Ah, no, I saw here another uh, current event, and here's a headline you probably haven't seen anywhere at all. I certainly haven't seen it either, but we have a New York judge that calls cops liars in the courtroom. You know, when they claim that they had a marijuana sniff that would justify a Fourth Amendment seizure of somebody in the car that they had stopped for whatever reason they stopped them. And, of course, the, the judge is quite right about that, and I wish something like that would happen a lot more often. And this underscores to me, by the way, uh, the absolute worthlessness of the Fourth Amendment, at least as it's being applied today. And for those of you who don't know, uh, the nine old farts of the U.S. Supreme Court has ruled on multiple occasions, starting with Baron v. Baltimore, 7 Peters 243, 1832. The Bill of Rights does not apply to the states. They were right then and they're right now. But with this purview Fourth Amendment, you know, under the Section 1 of the 14th Amendment, it's absolutely worthless. And that's been true since a case called Carroll v. United States, 262 U.S. Uh, 132, I believe. And that was during Prohibition, and it involved a stop with a uh, run runner, you know, was doing, during Prohibition, was running booze and all. And the court ruled against them. And the reason they used there pretty much eviscerated the Fourth Amendment, so I wouldn't waste any time, uh, you know, dealing with that. And that, by the way, for those of you who want to get an attorney or a public pretender, that's all they're going to argue in your case. If you have search and seizure type issues, that's all they know. They never think to challenge the jurisdiction of the court, which is a much better argument to make. And especially the way I do it in my modestly priced constitutional defense document packets. You know, send me an email at uwinincourt at gmail.com about that. I'll get you the information. You're going to love it, especially in concert with the ongoing Oakland case that I have. And you can stop these batches, especially in traffic courts, right out of the gate. Because you're going to be hitting them with close to 800 pages. And trust me, they can't answer two paragraphs. So I've had a lot of cases that you just show up and the cop fails to appear and they dismiss the case, or they just dismiss the case as soon as these documents come in. And better yet, now we can get them filed. That's the kiss of death. If they have this stuff on the record, they have nowhere to go. So that's even better for us. So send me an email about that. I'll get you the information. So that said, um, you know, the other problem uh, that we have you know, in these situations, and in traffic court and with the Fourth Amendment and all that, is that the U.S. Supreme Court has also ruled that cops, in effect, have absolute immunity for any perjury they commit on the witness stand. The case is called Briscoe v. Leahy. I think it's 460 U.S. 351. I've often wanted to ask uh, Dick Wolf on Law and Order whether he named Lenny Briscoe after this Briscoe. I don't know for sure, but it wouldn't surprise me. But absolute immunity, and they're the only witness testifying against you. And they have immunity, they can say whatever they want to say, they're not a damn thing at the moment you can do about it. There's going to be the way I do things, but not how they see it on the other side at the present time. But all of this nonsense, I mean, there's no judicial process, there's no nothing, no trial by jury. And my goodness, and if you're a cop, by the way, you have a lot of motivation to lie. Why not tell them not, what, it's not going to cost anything and it will increase the income of revenue quite possibly to the judges, to the DAs, to your police officers association. Who knows where this stream of money all goes to when the, the, at the end of the day. We don't know but there's some obvious irreconcilable conflicts of interest here. And if you start arguing those types of issues instead of Fourth Amendment you're going to do a hell of a lot better. It's just the way the system is set up to work. So, and by the way, I would say, um, you know, with absolute immunity, uh, you know, at least, you know, that's truth in advertising. They tell you up front, and they're not afraid of you, and it doesn't matter what you do or don't do. So, and by the way, this issue gets back to another big-time issue that we also have here, and that is that law enforcement and a lot of other people in the bargain the governor is not training them pursuant to his sworn duty to see the laws are faithfully executed. And what's likely happening is he's not telling them, for example, that the laws that they have, all the laws on their law books, apply to artificial corporate entities. 
and you probably aren't one. But I've got a notarized affidavit from my mommy. We laughed about it when she did it. That she said that you know the state of Maryland had nothing to do with my coming into existence. I'm not a corporate entity. That was a matter between her and my dad. So as silly as that seems on the surface, I mean she's best evidence one would assume of my birth and the fact I'm not a corporate entity. So those are the kind of things, and the governor's not training them, and they don't know any better. That doesn't help them, by the way, with respect to ensuing litigation the way I do things, because they have a sworn duty also. You know, they're bound by this Constitution and the laws enacted in pursuance thereof, Article 6, Section 2. Um, I can't. So anyway, um, you know, this all goes on in traffic court, and all because you argue these nonsense Bill of Rights arguments that don't mean a damn thing under the 14th Amendment, which as you'll see when you get my document package, the 14th Amendment doesn't even exist, and it never did from day one. And you will see why. It may shock you at first when I say something like that, but it isn't me saying it. I can't see. Hold on a second. Oh, okay, yeah, I've got a, in fact, I have another uh, video on fire. You can check it out on my uh, on my website there called 14th Amendment Explained, and I go into it, and I've got an extensive brief on this subject that you'll get with my packets, too, and explain why it doesn't exist and hasn't from day one. I mean, it violated all six articles of the Constitution. That's what I call a gruesome grand slam of violations, and that's what it is we need to start arguing and if you happen to find a licensed attorney that's willing to do that, please let me know. I have not found one anywhere with the exception of Jerome Daly. And unfortunately, he passed away about 20 years ago. He did his part like he was supposed to do, but all these damn state bar associates attorneys these days, you know, that's their malevolent monopoly on the practice of law that gets threatened. And that's why they won't file your paperwork, and that's why we're going to beat them. Because if they're not going to do their job and you have no assistance of counsel, and yet you've learned nothing in their mandatory public school system about the rights you have and how to take, take care of business here, there's no way you can put on a defense. Why bother to have the trial? Ain't. <clears throat> Get right to the directed verdict and you'll get it over with. Goodness sakes. That said, uh, you know, you know, tell your friends, subscribe to my videos, send me an email at youwinningcourt at email.com and like my videos. Thank you.